How you doing? Welcome to Music Industry City's Tuesday Talkies, where we discuss what's going on in the world of music business. I'm Peter Schwinger, and joining me today are my fellow co-hosts, Sam Tall, Aisha Adamo, Stephanie Carlin, and The Duke. If there's something you'd like to chime in about, let us hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, let's see what happened in the music video world. So Facebook, they have officially launched music videos in the US and it's gonna talk about how that's working out. YouTube removed videos in Denmark over songwriter royalty fallout. Spotify CEO Daniel X says working musicians may no longer be able to release music only once every three to four years. How can you navigate through the hazard thought patterns and maintain a healthy mindset and how to throw out that old paradigm and embrace the new one. So let's get to it. All right. So on Friday, Tamara Hervnek and Vijay Raji of Facebook posted, today we're adding a new way for people to come together around music by bringing official music videos to Facebook in the US. Starting this weekend, you'll be able to discover, watch, and share music videos from today's top artists to up and coming bands and classics across various music genres on Facebook. Let's see, Facebook is now taking on YouTube and to discuss how that's going, Sam Tall. Sam, how you doing? I'm good, Peter, how are you? Good, good. So, hey, uh, one quick thing. You'll be getting yours in the mail. Music Ooh. Industry City mugs. I usually have a coffee with me on the show, so I, hmm. I, can, I need one so I can start to sport it in a shot. 15 ounces, 15 ounces. <laughs> That's, that should be enough. But by the, by the end of this, I'm gonna be like re speed reading everything. <laughs> right, exactly. So big, big weekend for videos. Uh, I'm just gonna let you get right into this. Yeah, so this is what's really interesting. There's, there's a couple of like simultaneous events that are occurring in the world of video as it pertains to music. Firstly is the Facebook thing. I think that's a, it's, it's a big motion, but it's a little confusing about how it's playing out. And the reason I say that is because I'm an avid Facebook user. I run a Facebook group that has a lot of music industry people in it. And I don't know anybody personally who got notified about the where the videos are showing up or how to engage with them. I saw some stuff about like it's really underperforming in its first weekend. Um, I'm not sure that music videos are the play that Facebook is promoting it as. But I, I mean, basically, I don't think that they're creating music videos as a destination, but really kind of treating it as more in the Facebook watch space, something to beef it up. Obviously with YouTube, it's, if I have my numbers right, it's like 5% of content is music videos, but 25% of watch time is music watching. Um, and so obviously it's an important category, but I also think it's just a matter of deeper relationships for Facebook, uh, to have with the music companies. Um, and it's less about the videos and more about what the videos represent in a licensing sense and how that kind of gets them further afield. So all that to say, watch and see what happens. Um, but I don't think videos are the be all end all there. It's just, it happens to be super coincidental that the same time that that happens, YouTube loses the rights for uh, music videos in Denmark. And I'm freezing up, is this still good? You're still, okay, you're cool. still good, yeah. Cool. Um, the thing with Denmark is it's a small market as far as YouTube is concerned, but they have easy sway with other European countries. Um, it's a pretty significant, if not primary, uh, country for the majors, Germany kind of Germany and, L and England come first, obviously, and then Denmark is up there in a suite of other sort of things, especially when it comes to talking about Nordic countries as a collective. So Google obviously has a turbulent history with the EU and privacy and rights and all kinds of stuff, and so the sentiment's pretty negative. The blowback is immediate. Um, with the Denmark stuff, it's a nuanced conversation because technically. Some reads of the situation are that other PROs can license internationally to fill that gap, but practically they won't. And that's to do with collective and reciprocal agreements that exist. And so if, for example, BMI, who have done you know, international licensing in foreign offices and inroads in other territories um, that are non-US, they could go in theoretically and you know, grant 
YouTube those rights for the only for the works where they have exclusive first you know party dominion and not a reciprocal right. But they'd really piss off Coda, and and so they'd lose sort of the the good favor that comes there. So so there there's so much there's so much to unpack there on two things. Uh, let, let's work backwards on this. Uh, so let's talk about the YouTubes and Coda and what. They were talking about here is Coda claiming that YouTube is insisting in order to extend its temporary deal, because the deal, their multi-year license deal ran out in April. So uh, they must now agree to a near 70% reduction in payments to composers and songwriters. Um, YouTube says that- I don't that buy the, that. Yeah, it's- I don't buy that it's a 70% reduction. Well, and it says YouTube says that its new offer reflects this gap in the performance. So they're saying like, but it was rejected Coda on basis that the minimum guarantee was not same as the previous deal. So they're not hitting the minimums, and therefore they. It's kind of like if I'm just a publisher or just a, if I am I'm an ASCAP or BMI, and I'm just a songwriter and I don't hit my hundred dollars per 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 pay period, I'm not getting a check. So I think right. is that kind of what they're looking at here. I, I mean, I, that makes sense that like, for example, if Coda is demanding minimums and it's just not reflecting in the performance and YouTube is overpaying, I can see them trying to renegotiate the value down. Um, I think 70% sounds like a lot and I'm not sure where that number comes from. You know, obviously, it's private uh, accounting. Um, but both sides seem to be weaponizing some piece of the information and, and obviously YouTube holds the uh, – the control over whether that content exists at all. I know just from you know working in the YouTube space that it was immediate. I know people said it was a threat. It wasn't a threat. You know, Friday morning I was on phone calls and emails about music not being available in Denmark. So I, I, I assume that it's kind of taking the same approach as uh, the way that Content ID rolls out, which is it starts with the newest and most popular and then works down the list to the oldest and least popular over a course of processing. Mm -hmm. So so. I mean, there we could go on for a while on that. I, I want to go back to this Facebook and, you know, I'm, I'm digging deeper into what they were saying, you know, launching a new destination for music and Facebook watch where you can explore music videos by genre artists moved as well as themed playlists. You'll find timely playlists like popular this week and new this week. Plus there'll be updates to artist pages. So fans and specific acts can find and browse the official musics for videos for artists you love. So, here is another my, my big question here. Can Facebook be everything to everybody? And with that being said, because if we also not even looking at the the uh, Instagram, like the TikTok, uh, you know, what, what like reels, what they're trying to do is they're trying to take on TikTok. And then the, now we know what you see what's going on with TikTok and Microsoft. But tying this all together, Microsoft used to own Mixer, which was a competitor to Twitch for live streaming and, and gaming. So now Microsoft just unloaded Mixer over to Facebook gaming. And now it's like, I'm. is it confusing to what Facebook is? Is there gonna be antitrust at some point? Can it be everything to everybody? I think I have one note on that and then I think we just have to wait and see, which is that Snapchat recently announced a bunch of music licenses. Snapchat, we know, is a content platform now. It's less about the messaging, though that's still primary, but they're making a big hard push into original content and other kind of licensing deals like that. TikTok is obviously in a bit of a bind. Um, you know, they recently uh, upgraded some of their mechanical licensing agreements, their negotiations with the labels, the labels love them for the data, but they're obviously, you know, in a tough uh, tough position. Facebook getting into music in a more concerted way, YouTube having to renegotiate a bunch of licenses, um, Twitch now with, with you know, uh, Jeff Bezos in Congress revealing that he doesn't know if Twitch even pays for music, and the answer is they don't. <laughs> Everybody's got this sort of like, you know, uh, magnifying glass on music rights when it comes to uh, social media and video platforms. I love that we're having a much larger and more robust public commentary on it and that we might re-examine some of the rights and stuff in Congress about that. However, I don't know that any of these platforms are particularly good vehicles for delivering music. And that to your point about Facebook being everything to everybody, we know what Snapchat is. We know what TikTok is. We know what, uh, you know, sort of what works for those platforms. And Facebook just keeps experimenting in a googly kind of way. 
but it, it confuses the message. And I think mm-hmm. you're right that it can't be everything to everybody. Um, and it shouldn't try to be. 